Hello my friends, today we will be making this abstract photo over here. Um, without any further ado, I'm gonna get right into it. The prop I'll be using for this video is this corrugated paper. When you buy them, they come in pack like this of many colors. You can also get individual colors. And if you do not know what corrugated paper is, it's this paper that has this um, texture to it, these lines. I'm not sure my camera is focusing on it. But anyway, we will be using corrugated paper. For the table, I will be using this little stand. This is just a C stand that I put a little plate on it. So this is where my uh, bowl and paper is going to go. For the glass bowl, I will be using this one over here. I have a few of them. And uh, this is the smallest one I have. This will give you the best result for this kind of photography. I don't know if this will focus, but if you look at it, this will reflect everything that is in the room. You can see my whole room in it. And we will use that to our advantage because it will reflect that corrugated paper. Give it a good clean first. That will give us less work to do in Photoshop. And then I will be using, I'll be using this pink paper. Now I know the picture you saw on the thumbnail is not pink, but that's okay because we will make it golden in Photoshop. So we'll use the pink and then we'll change it all in Photoshop. What I need, so I'll put my paper over here. And then I need something to hold my paper. I want to place my paper something like this. So I just need some sort of stand or something. I'll use one of my props. And this props goal is to just hold my paper like this. Before we get to that, I will show you my backlight. For my backlight, I will be using just this little light stand with a speed light. So this is all I have for my backlight. No, um, nothing to modify the light, just a speed light on a stand. And we'll be shooting this light through this um, paper diffuser. This is a uh, Lee uh, Rascal. Uh, it's called, uh, which one is this? This is the number 3000. I believe this is called Tough Frost or something like that. I'll put it in the link in the description below. So I have this diffusing paper. I'll pull it down and then I'll be shooting light through it. And this is how we'll get our background light. Just like that. Before we take any pictures, we want to make sure we get the black frame. And the reason is because I have a lot of ambient light going on in here. I have all my ceiling lights on, and I also have um, Godox VL250, I think it is. Let's see, VL300. So I have a powerful light that is sitting right over there so you can see what's happening. And I need to kill all this ambient light. That way I can control the light. And in the photo, we will only have our speed light. light. So let's take a photo just like this. There you go. No flashes are on. And we are getting a complete black image. My settings on the camera right now are 1 to 50 of a second F8. I can even drop it, drop, drop it at 160. Let's see, 160 of a second shutter speed. F8 ISO 100. And if I take a picture, it's still really black. So we're good there. Now let's set our um, stuff here. What did I do with my glass bowl? There it is. So the way I will do this is I will bend this paper like this and then I will set my glass bowl right over here somewhere. Something like that. And maybe I'll even try to roll this paper so it rolls more this way. And let's see what we have now. I think my table is not leveled. My ball wants to roll that way, but that's okay. All right, now I will be shooting this in portrait orientation. So I need to set my camera like that and let's get our composition right. I have, this is my Sony 7R4 uh, and I am using the Sigma 105 macro lens. 
And that is looking great. I think we got the composition. I will be focusing, let's see. All right, I am focused on, I'm gonna move this a little bit lower. I'll be focusing where the paper reflects right here on the front, on the top part. And now let's turn on the background light and work on that. All right, the background light is on and I have it at the dimmest uh, power, which is one two fifty six of a second. Let's take a shot. And it is not bright enough, so I will increase it just a little bit. Put it at 128 and also I moved it a little bit more to this side, to the right as you're watching on the screen. And I'm going to lift it up just a tiny little bit too. And let's see now. And that is perfect. We got the perfect background light. I like how soft it is into the bowl. And um, what I wanna do now is put the light from that side and I do not need one on this side. And I will be working with hard light because I want to capture that uh, texture of the paper. So for that, I will be using I will be using my uh, Godox AD200 and I'll use it on bare bulb. And let's see how this will look like. I'm going to turn it on. And this is a uh, full power, so I probably need to turn it down. I'm gonna go with half power. And I'll put this on a two second delay. Let's see over here, two seconds. And let's take a shot. And that is not bad. Maybe just a little bit too much power. I can move a little bit backwards for it. But other than that, it's not bad at all. Let's take down the power a little bit, maybe one quarter. Let's take another shot. That is perfect. And notice how I took the, I put the light not in the same direction with my glass bowl. I put it a little bit behind and that way the shadow of it, it goes a little bit towards the front. And I will show you why I did that. If I take another shot and I'll point it here in the front, I'll show you here. If I put it more towards the front, you will end up with this ring around the side. Let's see if it updates. You see the shadow that it does not make a good circle. Let's look at the one before and the one now. So we get that weird shadow onto the right. You know what, you guys, I have to move this stand more this way because you see it's reflecting into my bowl. So I'm going to do that right now. Move it a little bit more this way. So let's see how that will look. I'm gonna take another shot. Lost my light, there it is. And that is worse. So I have to move it back the opposite, more that way. All right, let's try that. All right, that is not bad. Now I don't see that stand, and those stands I think they were onto my shot. Great. That is looking good. I'll take a couple of more shots just so we have some variation and then we will go to the computer and uh, edit this image. Now here we are in Lightroom and this is the image we will edit. I'll just do a very basic edit. I'll increase the exposure just a tiny little bit because it is a little bit underexposed. I will add some contrast, maybe around 21 
and then I'll take down the highlights just a tiny little bit, negative 26. I'll open out the shadows to maybe, let's see, uh, 55 or so. Then I will increase the whites to 31, 32, 33. And I'll take down the blacks to maybe negative 12. Then I would like to add some texture, maybe around 20, 21. I will add some clarity around 18 and some vibrance. I want to bring up the vibrance and I will put it at 22, 23, 25, anywhere around there. Then the other thing I want to do is just to add a little bit of sharpening and I'll keep the default at 40, hold down option to create a mask and only sharpen the ball and the paper like that. Great. I will click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction and now we will take this image into Photoshop and finish our edit. Command E to send it into Photoshop and this will automatically send it into Photoshop. And now into Photoshop, the first thing I would like to do is to duplicate my layer. Command J to duplicate it. Then let's take off this little, care of this little blown up highlights. To do so, I will zoom in a little bit. I'll go hold down Z, click on this 100, and that will zoom us at 100%. And let's see. We have some chromatic aberration. You see this blue over here, but that's okay. I want to take care of this flare. And the easiest way I find is to take my lasso tool that is over here on the left. And I'll just kind of draw around it, something like that. And then I can go to, let's see, I'll go to Edit, Fill, and I will fill it with Content Aware. And click OK. And Photoshop will do its best to fill that spot with Content Aware. And you see, it did a really, really great job. Command D to get rid of those marching ends. Now, this part over here is not perfect. Let's see if we can make that one perfect. A shortcut for it is Shift-Delete, and that will automatically bring in the Content-Aware Fill dialog. Command-0, Command-D to get rid of the marching ends. And it's not perfect, but it's okay for now. Let's, say we, if we, let's see if we can get rid of this um, flare over here. We'll do the same thing. We'll fill it with Content-Aware, and that did a really good job over there. We still have a little bit of color difference here, but that's okay. Now, what other problems do we have? We want to get rid of this guy over here. I can just use the spot healing brush. And let's see, I'll make it a little bit bigger and just kind of draw over it. And then I also have this kind of highlights in the middle here. I want to kind of get rid of those, or at least soften them a little bit. So I'm just painting over it with a spot healing brush. And that will do a decent job. Let's see. Something like that. I also have a little spot over here. Now I have some dust spots going on. One over here, some over there. There are some little wrinkles there. Just go through your image and clean it up. I'm not going to do all the cleanup because, well, it will take forever. And I'll just show you a couple of things here. It looks like I had a lot of dust spots. I need to clean my sensor. If you guys are curious to see how to clean a sensor, I can make a video about it. Or I think I already made one about a year ago. But there you go. It's looking good. Command zero to fit to screen. And now let's say that we are pleased with it. How can we make it golden? Because right now we have this like, you know, silver kind of background. And then we have the pink uh, ball and the paper. And we want to make it golden. Well, the easiest way to color grade this would be to just make a solid color adjustment layer. I'll just pick a green, whatever you want for now. And I'll say OK. And then I'll change the blending mode from normal. I will change it to color. And you see now we have a green. And you can double click on this color here and pretty much change it to whatever color you want. Now, I want that golden look because it's for Christmas. I'm thinking gold, so... I'm just going to cancel this. What I will do is I'll bring in an image that I think it has that color that I'm looking for. So I'll just go to File, Place Embedded, and I know I have an image here onto my downloads. And it's this image over here. I'll double click on it and bring it into Photoshop. I'll click OK. And now we have this image 
on top of our ball and the solid layer. And what I can do now is double click on this color again. And this time I can just choose a color from my image that I like. So we can go with something like this and click OK. And now we can delete this or we can hide it by clicking this eyeball. And this is our final image. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.